Virgo. This is your forecast for September of 2013 and happy birthday. You are going to radiate specially strong this month and not just because it is your birthday and on your birthday, but it also denotes astrologically that the sun is moving through your sign, which is the first house and the first house is your personality and the sun radiates. So you're going to be radiating this personality all month through. So not only that, you have your new moon there as well, and also Mercury. So a great month for you, Virgos, and the new moon <clears throat> in this sector of the first house is all about you uh, planting your seeds, your affirmations of what it is, and where you want to focus is the personality part of you, because that is the area it's transiting through, and your affirmation would be, I want to harness and hold this energy and be able to access it upon will throughout the rest of the year and radiate those beautiful warm feelings so it's not just this one little month a year but you can access it once you become conscious on how to use your planets. So that would be your affirmation September 5th on the new moon. Then we have uh, Venus this month. It is passing through your second house of finances. So I see how you're going to be balancing and maybe looking over your finances, your bank accounts, uh, looking at what you're earning, your income, and what you feel perhaps that you now deserve because it is in the sign of Libra, which are the scales. And it's the scales of love as well, and Venus is love. So uh, any issues now of self-worth, what you feel that should be coming towards you is going to open up and it's also what you're going to be giving out. So love this month is really tying in with your sense of self. And we got Mars now cruising through the 12th house. Uh, Mars has been very active now for two years and uh, it takes two years to go around once. And it's now currently transiting your 12th house Meaning that that energy that normally burns, you know, your, your ambitions, your drive, is now taking a little bit of a step back where it can allow itself a little bit of a recharge. However you do that or whatever you choose as your choice and preference of healing. Uh, Mars now uh, will be there probably for another month or so, so make the best use of doing those things that just make you feel great. We got Jupiter, 11th house, it's a social house, so friends, hopes, wishes, and dreams are uh, currently, you know, in this expansive area where you might have uh, been meeting a whole lot of people uh, out and about or from foreign places, cities, countries perhaps as well. Jupiter is the globe trotter, and it is like bringing friends in from afar. And if you're working with any kind of company that or organization, well then this is a time that Jupiter is going to behoove you to make very potent contacts that, that can be very beneficial and abundant for you in the long run. And we have Saturn, third house for communication. Your Saturn now is giving you a, a different, mm, what should I say, flavor, a different melody of how you communicate, who you communicate with, and probably coming across a bit stronger. And I'm happy to see that, Virgo, because sometimes you might be so reserved that you're not really the one to express all of your needs. You pretty much kind of take care of your own needs uh, for the most part. But I'm seeing that you're starting to surface now and finding that it is okay to put it out there and uh, express it. Because see, your surroundings, people around you, they're not, for the most part at least, telepathic. And if you're not communicating it, if you're not sharing it with your partner or whoever it may be, uh, then they just think that you're good. You know, they see your strength and your self-sufficiency. And, and then you're the one ending up feeling always getting the, the other end of the stick. It's like everybody else is getting help. How about me? Right? But it's because you haven't been expressing it. 
So Saturn's going to be working with you on this level here over the next mm, year and a half, two years more. And uh, by the end of this transit, you'll see how much stronger you are in this area of your life, that it is perfectly okay to express it. Whereas in the past, you're prob you would probably rather die than, than, you know, ask for something, <laughs> right? But good for you. This is good. This is growth. And Saturn builds new growth and it builds the foundations and it builds us structurally so that we can master the art of communication and doing it in a beautiful way, in a giving way. Um, so, yes, embrace your Saturn. Then we have Uranus, 8th house for uh, other people's money, banks, taxes, royalties, and so forth. And it, it, it's a long transit. It's going to be with us for a number of years in this area. And this can denote that you'll see whenever there's favorable aspects to Uranus, you can see there might be, you know, a sky fall to you where you can uh, receive money unexpectedly. But then you can also see there might be periods in your life now under this transit that money would be going out uh, that you hadn't expected. That's just the way Uranus rolls, okay? Unexpectedly. Now we have uh, Neptune in your seventh house for love and relationships and uh, how this works for you. And you know, it's in the sign of, um, <clears throat> of Pisces, which is the, the idealistic, the, the uh, cosmic love type. You know, you're kind of like set here to wanting now to experience what this is all about. Not just the physical, practical, daily type of love, um, but, but where you can actually merge and bond and become one and unite in this oneness with a partner. This is a longing that your spirit's going to, over time, more and more so be driving you towards. And it takes a special partner to have the concept and the feeling uh, and the experience of oneness. Uh, it would denote that this partner is very open spiritually. Um, so it can understand that level of frequency that you're coming from now. But it's a long transit. It's going to be here 10, 12 years, so we're not going to spend too much time here today on it. But every month I'll give you a new little feel of what this Neptune in Pisces can do for you in committed relationships or also working with people one-on-one -on -one closely, partnerships in that respect as well. Now, then we have Pluto, fifth house, children, uh, you know, so uh, there might be changes going on for one or more of your children, if you have them. Uh, for others who are wanting to have children, well, yes, I see it as a very intense period for you in that of wanting to have or try to get pregnant. Now, we're going to be looking at the top of the month and what we can expect here more on a day-to-day -day action, Virgos, and we're starting off on the first, with some major decision coming in that might feel like an accomplishment. Uh, it could be a decision that you're going to make, or it might also be something you've worked for that will come in with some results. So mark the first of September for that. The new moon on the fifth is in that first house. We've already discussed that a little bit, where you uh, make a, a, an agreement, an affirmation to yourself that you're going to allow yourself throughout this entire year to be able more on command or on will to bring out that personality, that radiant shine that you normally only have in your birth month. So that's a wonderful gift to bring along with you on that path. Then we have Mercury moving out of that area, the personality area, into the second house for finances. <clears throat> this is going to be on uh, the 8th. And you will see from the 8th and onwards throughout the month that you're going to be thinking a little bit more about your finances, how you can tweak it, how you can balance it, how you may be able to creatively draw some more um, money, you know, income, or also have talks with your bosses about your income. Whatever the deal is, this is going to be for September. On the 10th, we have Venus moving into the very sexy sign of Scorpio, so you might feel now that your Venetian energies are a little bit more in touch with those deeper desires, 
it's also in the house of communication how you communicate who you communicate with and what those topics are going to be about and on the um, let me see on my list here on the 18th this very same Venus is going to be joining up with Saturn so mark that on your calendar because Venus here really wants to lock in something securely and that is what Saturn does for us it, it, it gives us new agreements and uh, so that could be with a partner it could also be with anybody um, that at this time uh, represents something uh, for you that is tying into hopes and dreams because that Saturn you know how we talked about the golden triangle that was in the skies from the end of July throughout August well Saturn is the one tripolar point here of that triangle and having Venus touch this now is also going to be kind of resonating here with what Jupiter set up and what Neptune set up and this would be between the third and the seventh and the eleventh house so it's communication committed partnerships and also friendships and I think for you it's all about finding out what part of your relationship or whoever you're in, interested in how much of that is friendships how much of it can be committed okay so there might have been a little bit of a gray zone for a while for you but coming into this period here in September you're going to find out by having deeper communication uh, with this partner and to figure out where you stand together so that it can land you on that same path then we have also on the 14th Mars and Uranus uh, in a trine Mars is your ambitions, goals, and drives. It is your physical energy also. And coming in with Uranus here, it is uh, giving you, should I say, more of a psychic feel because it's between your 12th and your 8th house. The 12th house Mars is listening within to those promptings uh, where you're a little bit more in touch perhaps with your own inner needs. You know, it's so easy for you, Virgo, to look at what you can do for others. But right now, Mars being in Leo, you know, and Leo is the self. <laughs> and it is in the 12th house, so it's kind of laying here. Um, but Mars is really wanting something now for self. You know, and I'm happy to see that this energy is actually focusing here as this Venus, the other end of love is tying in with Saturn so you can get some of these energies now to create a synergy of knowing where you're heading and I think for, for you Virgos it's always important for you to know and have that type of security and especially in relationships because Neptune as beautiful as she is you know in creating this beautiful lofty dream of the soulmate twin flame and all that she can also create a lot of fog, you know, or, and mist. So uh, there's quite a few of you, uh, and especially this last month here, I've had a lot of Virgos having readings about their relationships, that they're feeling they're in this nowhere land or in uh, Alice in Wonderland. It's like, what is going on? It's like your partners can be projecting something of hopes for you, and then they seemingly just fizzle or they disappear and think about Neptune ruling the ocean try to hold water in your hand it will just run straight through right so some of you are feeling that now it all depends on your personal planets in your chart too how structurally secure it could be or how uh, much of a fog you will experience that we can't see here from these transits but we can definitely look at that at some other point but this uh, Neptune is beautiful, but you need to bring it up to the highest octave, the highest level of it, for it to really filter through and guide you through intuition. That is the main goal of what Neptune can do. If we're just allowing it to kind of waddle around here, well, you know, there, there's a big ocean to swim around in it. Yes, you can get lost at times there with a partner. However, though, we have on the uh, 18th and, and uh, 19th, we have some very intense energies coming in, and it has to do with you and uh, how you communicate here in a love relationship. So whatever starts there on the 18th 
the Venus Saturn is now followed right behind it is the Venus Pluto and that is intensity it's deep it's transformative it is uh, uh, emotionally bonding and also um, passionate you know so and, and sexual too so look for these days here between the 18th and 19th what takes place here for you Virgo that same Pluto in the fifth house for creativity and self-expression and, and love relationships is turning direct on the 19th. Just want to mention that too. Um, this planet has been asleep for many, many months, so we might not have seen as much progress as you had wanted to hope for. But from this day onward, it takes time for it to kind of, you know, get back into traction and moving in the right direction. But slowly but surely, you'll start seeing how Pluto is going to be supporting you in this area for love and also for your, your child or children, that they also will start be picking up energy and moving ahead in their lives as well. Then we have a little healing on the 20th when the sun kind of meets up here with Chiron. Uh, it, it's just a quick fly-by-night thing. It might just be a couple of days here. But you'll feel it, and especially it's like there's those kind healing words coming from either friends or, excuse me, loved ones. And on the 20th, there is also something that's grounding itself within either a contract, a communication, uh, anything paperwork on that day, or any uh, major meetings should be important for you. Um, and if you can schedule it to the 20th, then you're already like guaranteed that something is going to work for you and <clears throat> behoove you. Uh, creative projects, uh, the same thing, anything started like a new business here on the 20th, it will have longevity. It will really just launch you. So if you're thinking of starting a business and getting your license, I'd say, if you're that close to doing it, hang on to the 20th. That will guarantee a birth chart for your business to, you know, fly off with wings from the get-go. So the, mo the, the month is ending here on a beautiful note. Venus and Jupiter, uh, they are doing the dance. Uh, Venus uh, being just extremely joyful and expressive in your third house. Jupiter here wanting to really kind of unfold coming from your 11th house so here on the 26th uh, you could spend some great time with with friends or also if you're having any kind of get together or event with groups or organizations let me tell you though it's going to be a fantastic day evening and you might even find new friends or people or even a love relationship that might surface here on the 26th that's pretty much what we have for you Virgo for this month and uh, do listen to your moon and rising sign to get a little bit more of a take what's going on and I'll see you next month.